Today we are going to look at how to describe a single transformation. Note the use of the word single. You are not allowed to combine two or more transformations together. We shall assume that you can tell what type of transformation has occurred before we start. These five pictures show the possible types of transformation. In each case, the pink shape is positioned in the same place. This is called the object. The orange shapes are the images. The possible transformations are the reflection, rotation, translation, and enlargement. We will consider two types of rotation: 180 degrees and 90 degrees. Before we look at our individual examples, let us look at what information is expected when we describe each of the transformations. For a translation, all that is required is a column vector. For an enlargement, you need both a scale factor and a center of enlargement. The scale factor describes how many times larger or smaller the sides have become. The center of enlargement is a point. For a reflection, all that is required is the mirror line, but this will usually need to be given as a straight line equation, i.e., y equals mx plus c. Although mirror lines will almost certainly only be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal at 45 degrees. For a rotation, you need to state the angle of rotation and the center of rotation. The angle will almost certainly be 180 degrees or 90 degrees. If the angle is 90 degrees, you will also need to state whether the rotation is clockwise or anti-clockwise. As for the enlargement, the center of rotation is a point. Don't forget also to state the actual transformation, i.e., a translation, an enlargement, a reflection, or a rotation. This is a translation. The shape has just been moved. Choose a point on the object and count squares to the corresponding point on the image. We have travelled four to the right, and we have travelled down three, so the column vector is four minus three. This is an enlargement, probably the easiest to spot. Start by drawing in the guidelines between corresponding points on the object and the image. You need at least two guidelines. But the more you do, the more likely it is that you will get it right. Comparing the sides of the object and the image, the object has a base of two squares and the image a base of six squares. So the scale factor is three. The center of enlargement is at zero six. This is a reflection with a diagonal mirror line. Firstly, draw in the mirror line. You might plot some points halfway between pairs of corresponding points on the object and on the image. Considering points such as 0, 10, 2, 8, 4, 6, and 10, 0, we see that the equation of the line is x plus y equals 10. This is a 180 degree rotation. All you have to do for a 180 degree rotation is to join up corresponding points on the object and the image. They will all intersect at the same place, the center of rotation. A 180 degree rotation could also be described as a negative enlargement with a scale factor of minus one, about the same center point. The center of rotation is at four comma six. This is a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. It's harder to locate the center of rotation for 90 degrees. One way, however, is to construct perpendicular bisectors for corresponding pairs of points. The bisector for three, five, and seven, five is a vertical line. For 3, 4 and 6, 5, we need a midpoint and a perpendicular gradient of minus 3. Hence we can see that the centre of rotation is at 5, 3. And that's how you identify a single transformation.